Hello and welcome back to Total War Rome 2 folks. Air of Carthage here and we are in for another sub commanders battle and this one is going to be a fun one. Battle of Athenae so the the terrain here is going to be pretty intense compared to what you see in a normal battle. Athenae is a very sloped map in terms of the top of it rolling down to the ocean but you get these hills on both deployment zones and a, and a kind of wooded hill here in the middle um, that make for some interesting battles over command of the terrain. So this should get really interesting. We're going to have RDA, Carthage, and Swaby going up against the Boii, Athens, and Pontus. Or, sorry, Egypt. I mistook them for Athens, real. So, uh, yeah, Pontus, Egypt, and Boii. So Boii are carrying the melee infantry, almost certainly. Egypt's got the support with Levi Thurios and skirmishers. Pontus has the cavalry. I see some citizen, noble blood. Cappadocian citizen, and it looks like a Scythian horse archer. The Swaby have a couple of riders of the hunt hidden out here. It's interesting. And then the rest of the Swaby cavalry, it looks like three Germanic scout riders, and then a noble rider general, and another noble rider. The RDA are taking the spear support, obviously, because they do have pretty solid spears. Illyrian marines are excellent spear units. They got Illyrian Thurio spears. Uh, slave slingers are not amazing, but at this price point, they're going to be pretty solid. And you got the uh, the noble um, uh, noble hoplites for the RDA, which are just brutally powerful hoplites. Even the standard Illyrian hoplites have a lot of armor and are pretty tough units. And then Carthage bringing in the mercenary Samnites and presumably maybe Libyans. No, it looks like just Samnites. And then there's mercenary Iberians and Scutari. And the Scutari are actually thrown in a loose formation, which certain certain units can do. Interesting, they're in a loose formation. You wouldn't want them that way if they get charged, but it could be to minimize missile casualties. Now, Skitari are going to be pretty decent infantry at this price point. They uh, lack the armor of some heavier infantry, but they're pretty solid on the attack. Um, and then uh, if we take a look at the Sam Knights, they're a more defensive unit, very heavy armor, uh, akin to something elite, but their stats in terms of attack and damage are more mediocre. Those Germanic scout riders doing a good job facing off against those horse archers. It is two versus one, though, so they will have to be careful. It looks like the uh, the blue team, I'm just going to call it blue, even though they got a couple of yellow banners, the blue team over here um, is uh, taking a commanding position here on this high ground with the scrub. However, the red team just kind of sitting in their deployment, too. They have a nice hill. The big challenge they have is they don't have the scrub for cover, um, and the scrub actually does hide some units, so it, it can be nice in a way to kind of allow for some surprises. Let's take a look at this team though. Egypt has brought Egyptian slingers up front. Uh, they are protected by Thurios, is that a yeah, Thurios spear, not a levy, but we do have levy Thurios spears too, which are an even cheaper Thurios spear, which again, cheap is sometimes dangerous. Royal Thorax Sword General, which is an interesting pick for Egypt, which means their general is gonna be very competent melee unit, um, but it means that there's a lot of spend there that Egypt couldn't put into further <clears throat> missile units. We are seeing an Egyptian archer here, a javelin men. Presumably there could be another javelin men over there. Then there are Levi Thurios and Thurios spears in the rear. OAI has some naked warriors and sword followers and an oath sworn general and a front line of axe warriors and Celtic warriors. Um, Pontus has the cavalry. We saw the noble blood cav and citizen cav earlier. Um, so we will go from here and kind of see how this one turns out. Yeah, I mean, if I'm the Slave Slingers, I'm going to sit back and skirmish this. And why not? They have good cover here. They've got a good position to fire from. I'm, I'm going to just take this engagement. Slave Slingers are cheap. And there's there is only three of them. <clears throat> I thought I had seen four earlier. But it does appear to only be three. But still, I, I think it's an engagement that I just sit back here and, and take and burn some ammunition off of these Egyptian slingers. I think that the slave slingers will get the better of this because of that slight bit of cover in this terrain that they get. <clears throat> these small trees are driving that. Here, now I gotta get some water real quick while you're watching this one. <clears throat> I'm on an absolute, like, recording spree right now. I've recorded probably, like, at least 10 videos in the last 24 hours, so my voice is about to go out. <laughs> I'm trying to get a whole bunch of stuff stacked up for you all while I'm on vacation. So I, I'm doing a tremendous amount of recording, like a week's worth of it, and probably more than I've done in the last week. <clears throat> so I'm trying to give you all not just a week's worth, but like a stacked week's worth. Now this is interesting. Look at this. 
the Boei pulling their melee assault troops out of the main formation and stacking them on the flank as if that they're going to try and come overload a flank. The problem is the Egyptians don't really have any melee power here, so this could be risky. There's no cavalry support, so to speak, out here either, which, again, a little bit risky. Those noble horse could cause some trouble. Yeah, the slingers now targeting out here, as they should. They might be trying to force the Boei to attack here. Interesting. The Egyptian archers um, are not in range. They've only got 125 range, so they would have to scoot forward rather significantly. Uh, the Slave Slingers are certainly winning, and if the Boei sit out here, they're just going to get chewed up by that other Slave Slinger, and then they have to deal with this uh, Germanic Scout Rider as well. So I'm kind of curious to see what the red team does here. I don't really think they can sit around much longer um, and take this, but if they assault from this flank, I mean, they're going to be met by significant resistance. There's three mercenary Sam Knights, and if Egypt assaults the front, I mean, they still have to take on an Illyrian Hoplite. There's a noble Hoplite over there, too. I, oof, yeah. I don't know. I like the, the blue team's position at the moment. They've got the skirmish advantage, and I feel like infantry-wise, they can hold against the Bowie. I, especially if they play their cards right. Pontus would have to do something extraordinary with its cavalry here, I think, to, to make me change my mind about how I think people are doing here. I mean, the Egyptian infantry does have a ton of javelins, which in, in and of itself is, you know, some advantage. Depends on how those get used. The naked warriors moving out there, too. So, wow, the Bowie are really loading up for a flank assault here. That Scythian horse archer was getting butchered by the scout riders on the way back. I mean, it, it got some shots into them, too, because the... Uh, yeah, these two Riders of the Hunt hidden out here. I haven't seen this unit in a long time. Riders of the Hunt. That is a crap load of melee attack for a light horse. I mean, and a brutal charge bonus, too. And they even have Frenzied Charge. I just have not seen this unit in a long time. So Riders of the Hunt, interesting. That is a very capable light cavalry. It's going to be dangerous to almost all of the Egyptian units um, if it gets into them without you know, just eating javelins for days. And Germanic Scout Riders are no pushover in a melee either. Like, they're pretty decent. Uh, you get them into a lower armor fight and they'll do just fine. So it, it's interesting, like, the, the red team seems determined to try and make the other team come at them, but they really don't have anything to force that engagement. If the blue team comes at them, it's by choice. Um, and, I mean, yeah, the, the skirmish advantage just isn't there for the red team. They're going to have to force an issue. And there goes the Scythian horse archers. So that's going to make matters a little worse here, too. There's a few Egyptian slingers left, and then we have the Egyptian archers. Yeah, yeah, it looks like some of the Egyptian slingers basically just retreated. Like, they're going to refuse to fight those slave slingers. Look at this. The slave slingers barely got touched. Yeah, they, they barely got touched. That cover is extremely important. Firing from cover. Look at this. The Iberian sword going to get in here and use the terrain. Get some cheeky javelins into those Scythian horse archers, that was well played. And then they're moving in a loose formation too, which makes the Scythians return fire uh, less than stellar. Although we've got a bit of a good old fashioned standoff here at the OK Corral, so let's go ahead and fast forward. And I guess in this case, the Athenai Corral. <laughs> let's see what happens. Um, who's going to be forced to do what? So, looks like more harassment on the way over here. And will that get the Boei into action. Well, I mean, this is definitely bait. There's no doubt about it. This is bait. The Marines and the Iberians are javelin-heavy units, and they are... Yeah, this is what they're aiming to do. They're aiming to cause more damage to the Boei and kind of force the issue still. Oh, Pontus, don't do it. Don't do it. Oh, this is not good. Illyrian Thurio Spears back there are going to pump these guys full of javelins. Yep. Don't do it, Anakin. They have the high ground. <laughs> oh, the Citizen Cavalry just goes for broke. And broke is what they're going to get here. They at least forced a blob. I mean, I, if they moved forward and took advantage of it, that could be one thing. But they're just still sitting back. So firing into the scrub is going to get them nowhere. 
and they threw away a citizen cavalry. Now, the Bowie are going to use this occasion to attack. Look at this. Noble cavalry is just going to destroy those Celtic warriors. Frenzied charge there. 30 plus kills on the charge. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking that the blue team has a great chance here. We shall see. Pontic Royal Cavalry General. It's an interesting pick there. It really needs to pull back. It is in grave danger here, being around these Illyrian hoplites. Yeah, this, this infantry engagement is not starting well for the Bowiei. Not at all. Pontus is trying to support, which is admirable, but these noble riders are just giving absolute fits to these sword units over here. And then that's going to be backed up by heavily armored hoplites and sam knights. And this barbarian infantry is capable against those units, but it requires a good, clean charge and initial engagement, which they are just really not getting here. And so the sam knights and the Illyrians are going to be like a rock wall, um, and the Bowiei are going to be having sticks essentially it's going to be like attacking a rock wall with sticks it's just not going to work they really need that charge to help fuel them through that combat and the the, the swaby cavalry just denied them that look at this a breakthrough by the germanic scout riders now has pontus chasing them with all their cavalry because they're worried about losing their skirmishers but that cavalry support is just dearly needed over here pontus has got to start cycle charging these swords or something to break the line uh, for the Bowiei, uh, but instead they're chasing these Germanic scout riders, and now the riders of the hunt also out here, and so Egypt is going to find itself under an all-out cavalry assault soon. Um, so yeah, Cappadocian, Noble Blood, Citizens, and our Pontic Royal Cavalry. That Pontic Royal Cavalry could be dishing out some brutal charges over here, feasibly, and it certainly needs to be. The Bowiei are getting wrapped up very quickly in combat. They, they are not getting the better of this engagement, not by any stretch of the imagination. Here comes some of that Pontic Cavalry, but looks like it's going to be countered by Illyrian Thurio Spears. There are Illyrian Marines nearby as well, and they are dumping their Javelins into this Oath Sworn. Now remember, Illyrian Marines get extra accuracy, and so they can do a good job of pumping Javelins into a fight over the top of Friendlies. Look at those Riders of the Hunt. They were hunting some skirmishers, and they have found them. Wow. Yeah, that Riders of the Hunt right there is going to be shredding. There's a Citizen Cavalry coming in to try and stop it, and then all the Javelins are going to fly in now, but still a nice job by that Rider of the Hunt. The Oathsworn is cracking over here uh, through, but the Illyrian Nobles are backing it up, and then this the Sword Followers are faltering. Um, yeah, they just and there's a whole other Sam Knight Warrior back here, too. Pontus is helping to push here against Carthage. Um... But they're being blunted by the Royal... Or, sorry, the Royal Thorax Sword is helping here as well. And that's also a very tough unit. I forgot about that one. It's in formation attack, which it needs to leave right now too. Which is why you're seeing it fight in such an awkward angle. Definitely make sure you turn off formation attack in room 2. It's pretty much pointless unless your objective is to go into guard mode and hold a line in like a choke point or something. You should just not be in formation attack ever. Pretty much... Looks like they may have left it right here, too. Because now they're kind of forming up and getting in there. They're getting a lot of kills. It's a dangerous unit. That Oathsworn is also a dangerous unit. And it is shredding the Noble Hoplite to a degree. But let's see. The Naked Sword's coming in now, too. That's going to help getting a good charge there. If they cycle charge a couple of times while the Sword Followers are still there, that could be a huge boon for the Bowiei. They might be able to help turn that around a little. Yeah, that Royal Thorax Sword is just putting an absolute beat down in that fight. See, Ponta still has some cavalry. There's still some uh, heroic riders back here, though. Slave Slingers, I, I just don't even know. Are, they have ammo at this point? They do. They do. So they are a viable target for Pontus, but they're going to be countered, no doubt, by the noble riders, and Pontus would then lose its general. Well, this is interesting. I thought this might be an easy roll-up for the blue team, but... That Royal Thorax Sword and that Oathsworn decided that, hey, I'm not making this easy for you. A Naked Warrior's trying to run away from the Heroic Rider as well it should. Naked Warriors don't have any business in a fight against Heavy Cavalry. That, that Naked Warrior really did a pretty spectacular job here. It's got 75 kills. And the Sam Knights are now in trouble, whereas they were in pretty good shape a moment ago. That Royal Thorax Sword is just... I mean, they are throwing down a butt-kicking, the likes of which these Illyrians have never seen. It is still in formation attack. If it wasn't in formation attack, it would win that fight a lot faster. 
It's got to get out of formation attack. It's going to be attacked in the rear by an Illyrian Hoplite. It's going to turn around and charge him. Good idea. This unit's going to get tired, though, from that use the whip ability, but they still should just take a crap on the, uh, the Illyrians. Look at this. The Thurio Spear is coming in, too. Is the red team turning this around? I think they are. I had doubted them this whole time. Air the doubter. <laughs> I'm about to get it thrown in my face. Egg, egg in my face. I'm pretty sure the red team's turning this around. I, I don't know what the blue team can do about this Royal Thorax Sword. It is absolutely chopping them to bits. Like, the only damage getting done to it right now is probably mostly friendly fire from those javelins coming in. Those guys have 155 kills and climbing fast. And uh, it looks like the, the Hoplites decide they're going to go after that Thurio Spear that was killing them from behind. And that's a good idea. We've got a wet noodle fight here between an Illyrian Thurio Spear and a Thurio Spear. Like, whipping each other with spaghetti noodles to death. Yeah, the red team's going to turn this. Wow. I, I thought for sure they were defeated there. I did not see them winning that. I, kudos to the Bowie Eye Infantry here for being very robust because they were in a very bad fight early on. But their units held on and made it through. Pontus did get their cavalry back. They did get the support in there. And they won. <laughs> wow. That's awesome. I mean, it's cool to see a fight where you think you know what the ending is and then it flips it on its head. I don't know about you all, but I like seeing that. I think it flipped it on its head. I just, I don't see a comeback route here for the uh, the remaining yellow and blue units here. That Royal Thorax Sword ended up being an absolute clutch unit. 186 kills. Yeah, the Oath Sworn, 172 kills. That O Swarm was in a tough fight. They were getting dumped on by cavalry and other units there, so that was that was a brutal fight for the O Swarm. They're still getting cycle charged by Cav. Yeah, epic victory here for the red team. Well done. I I felt like they were in comeback territory, and I was thinking, oh well, they're just gonna have to rush forward and attack. And they didn't. They they held their ground and they waited. And they did eventually rush forward over here on this flank. And, and the strategy worked. Splitting splitting up like that. Wow. That Royal Thorax Sword too. I mean, usually when these expensive sword units get picked for like Egypt or Seleucids, you don't see them end up being effective. They were absolutely brutal in that fight. Picking up a double chevron. Holy cow. I want to see all this. So Vortigant Sauce here playing the RDA. Um, I've got to click on it to get that stuff up. So... I mean, usually the Illyrian Noble Hoplites in these fights are very brutal, and this one did a good job, but they ended up having to fight Oathsworn, and Oathsworn are really tough. They, they're not specifically an armor-piercing unit, but they deal heavy damage. So armor or not, um, it's kind of like having armor-piercing because they chopped through it. This, the two standard Hoplites, one of them did pretty good. These Illyrian Thurial Spears got some good kills, and so did this Marine. Marines are really nice support units. I think the RDA are an excellent support faction in this genre here, sub-commanders. Johnny here playing Carthage. I thought for sure his Carthaginian infantry was going to hold the line there. Those Sam Knights, um, and they just weren't able to. Uh, shows you the strength of the Bowie. I bet the excellent charges here by Soul early on in that fight. Just putting in crushing damage with those Noble Riders against the, the uh, Bowie Eye, and I thought for sure that was going to turn it. But again, kudos to Dark Shadows Bowie Eye here. They held on through that. And the sword followers uh, ended up being clutch, and that naked warrior came in and got even more kills. Um, so that was a pretty cool move, leaving that naked warrior to late in the battle rather than early. And it ended up causing a ton of damage. Now, remember, naked warriors, they have no defense and no armor, but they just have a, almost a cavalry like charge. And you can see how effective that was when it was brought to bear late in the game, and that Osworn picking up a triple chevron there. So, wow. Uh, good game to Vortigant, Johnny, and Soul. I think uh, well played by all of them. I, I mean, this was a very close battle, so I don't think you can come in and say that any player really did poorly here. Pontus, 256 kills, that noble cavalry. And despite the early um, throwing in of that citizen cavalry, Pontus really did a good job with this cavalry in terms of, uh, clearly they killed a ton of skirmishers here with the Pontic Royal Cav. Um, and then, they, they, again, they lost their horse archers, but they, they didn't let the enemy run amok all over their team. So nice work by Alexander here at the Pontus Cavalry. And then good work by the Bowie Eye. And then the Egyptian player here, despite losing the skirmish engagement early, held on to the sanity, waited, you know, bought the time, and then came in late with that Royal Thorax Sword and just absolutely opened a barrel of 
you know what all over the uh, the enemies there so well well played well played anyway good game to all and air carthage signing out for now i'll see you all soon with some more action in total war room 2